the the bug and scrub program uh, was created to uh, sort of fill a hole uh, where vulnerable in individuals, either because they have uh, physical or mental health issues, so in some cases it's seniors, in some cases it's people with bad backs, uh, in, in some cases it's uh, single moms, in some cases it's uh, people with severe mental health issues that uh, for whatever personal reason can't properly prepare for bed bug treatment. Uh, a lot of the other people throughout the, the course of this evening have talked about uh, situations where there's neglected suites in a building where a large population establishes uh, and that population ends up in the walls of buildings and in a lot of cases behind, behind a lot of those situations is a vulnerable individual who wasn't uh, able to properly prepare uh, for bed bug treatment. And so uh, in those cases, we, uh, this program is there uh, for landlords uh, and for the tenants involved to make sure that that situation uh, gets dealt with before it becomes out of control for everyone involved. Um, I'm going to go over, uh, I guess, uh, what we do. Um, we usually come in, our, our, our treatment is broken into uh, three phases and the last phase is kind of prolonged because we try and stick with tenants until they actually get rid of the bugs. And so in cases where the bugs have been around for a long, long time, sometimes it's uh, through the course of uh, two or three or sometimes more than that sprays. Uh, but uh, our, our first phase is just a general assessment where we come in and assess uh, the, uh, the situation, assess how much clutter is there, assess the, com uh, the uh, like level of compliance from the, that we're going to receive from the tenant. Uh, in a lot of cases we talk to the landlords uh, and uh, in some cases we make contact with uh, the, the pest control company if we don't know the spray date uh, <coughs> to help with planning that part of it as well. Uh, then we come in uh, for the second phase, which is sort of the meat of what we do. Uh, we come in and do a, a really thorough clean. We gather all uh, the laundry, uh, and we have a, a large heat trailer uh, where we heat, uh, we have uh, sensors, uh, and we ensure that the core temperature of those laundry bags gets up to, well, 135 degrees to be sure, 120 is what you're uh, trying for it to, to kill the bugs and, and so we try and shoot past that to make sure that we're getting the bugs. Uh, we also do, uh, in, in some cases, uh, as uh, some of the speakers before alluded to, you can't deal with the problem until you deal with some of the clutter in the room and so we have uh, a large trailer and uh, assist tenants. Um, and in cases where a tenant, uh, uh, where there is a suite that is cluttered, uh, sort of cluttering is a mental health issue in itself uh, and so uh, as, as, a, as a landlord if you have a tenant that's in that situation it's really hard to understand how uh, some people sort of let things get that way um, but uh, in, in those cases in a lot of those cases those are people that would qualify for the program uh, and that could really uh, it'd be a benefit to yourself and to the individual involved uh, if we were able to, to come in and help them with that part of the process. Um, as uh, as the, uh, the other speakers alluded to as well, the, uh, the sprays that they use uh, don't kill the eggs and so there's multiple treatments involved and so there's a couple of things that we do with that. Uh, we, we do steam uh, couches and chairs and uh, bed bugs because they're the opposite of claustrophobic. They like small, dark spaces. Uh, when we go in and prepare a suite, oftentimes where we find them is on the underside of pieces of furniture. Uh, and so we empty out all the furniture and steam furniture. We flip furniture over and steam the underside of it. And so it's a, it's a, really, uh, it's a really thorough uh, and sort of invasive process and we try and uh, work with the tenants and, uh, in, in doing the best job possible of that. Uh, one of the, the other things that we do uh, and, and what I feel is a really important part of what we do 
Uh, bed bugs are a problem in individual units, but the risk that uh, an individual bring home, bring home, uh, brings home bed bugs is say like one or two percent. We might pick them up in a uh, in a restaurant or on a bus, or uh, we might be at a friend's place who we aren't aware has bed bugs. There's a small risk that we end up bringing them home. But as soon as uh, you get into a multi-unit building uh, where there's 50 units in the building, it's just sort of a matter of time before bed bugs get introduced. Uh, and after bed bugs are introduced, uh, because they recognize that chemicals are chemicals and because they flee from chemicals, uh, that's, uh, and it's necessary to treat the, the bed bugs, that can also be a situation where you get spreading to, to, to other suites. And so, and that's also why it's important to spray the neighboring suites when you're spraying individual suites. A lot of landlords try and save money by spraying the particular <coughs> suite that's infected. But when you're spraying, that's also uh, sort of prime opportunity for them to, to spread into other suites. But as I was saying, one of the things that we do connected to that is, is sealing units. We either use plumbies, plumber's putty or foam or caulking to seal up pipe chases uh, around sinks in the washroom in the kitchen uh, and uh, around the water line into the toilet. We put on a door sweep uh, and we'll caulk uh, the bottom and tops of baseboards. And in, uh, and in suites that are open, like uh, say you have a, a suite that you're trying to rent out, in my mind there's, there's no reason ever not to spend uh, two or three hours work uh, and, a, and 30 or 40 dollars in material uh, doing everything you can to save yourself uh, thousands of dollars later. You're talking about like uh, uh, 120, 150 bucks uh, that can save a lot, of, a lot of money down the road. And none of those things are perfect but if you think about yourself as a, as a bed bug in a wall uh, that uh, it's sort of like being in a dark room uh, with a crack under the door and a light on the room next to you. That hole in the wall is really, really visible and it's really easy to find. And so if you can start to, if you can maintain your suites and, and do little things to, to close up those gaps, you can really save yourself a lot of money in the, in the long run. And that's sort of part of what we do with our program as well. If we're in a suite, uh, part of uh, part of our treatment is uh, by the time our process is done we'll, we'll seal it up at the end of it. Um, as I said earlier we work with uh, individuals and uh, different degrees of physical health so part of what we do is move furniture we try and move it to two feet which isn't always uh, isn't always possible in some of the suites that we work in. Uh, we uh, through the, through the province, there's uh, low cost bed bug materials, and so uh, we often put on mattress covers and, uh, and put on those climb up interceptors on uh, sitting areas, whether they be fabric couches or chairs, uh, and also beds. So that's the, uh, that's the, the meat of the, like this, this sort of bug and scrub program. Uh, the, the second sheet I gave to you is the request for service form. Uh, and the request for service form can be filled out by uh, any variety of individuals that know the person. It can be a landlord. Uh, it's, uh, it can be a family member. It can be a healthcare provider. So we get a lot of them through EIA workers or through social workers um, uh, or through persons like Daryl that work with uh, tenants and other individuals in the North End. Um, and it's, it's pretty simple to fill out. It just has uh, like basic contact information and then they're prioritized according to need and there's uh, different things that are involved uh, in whether a person qualifies for the program. And I'm just going to go through them. I mean you can read them for yourself as well but I'll go through them quickly. Uh, one of them is the degree of infestation, and as it says there, if there's less than 20 visible bugs, uh, it, it's classified as 
uh, as a one, uh, and if it's over 50, they classify that as, as fairly infested. And when you're looking for bugs, I'd really, uh, like, uh, as they suggested earlier, it's good to pull, pull the bed back and look behind the baseboard. It's also good to, to actually flip up uh, the mattress and box spring, because a lot of them are on the underside uh, of the box spring. That's uh, I mean, we, we find them all over the place, uh, but that's one of the primary areas that you'll find them in. And, and if you are unsure uh, about whether there's bugs in the room, uh, like those sticky traps have some use, uh, but I actually prefer those interceptors because the bugs, it, if you think about uh, the bugs have to feed to survive, uh, and their primary feeding areas are on the mattress and on the, uh, on, the, on the sitting areas where a person is sitting for a while. And so if you provide uh, those interceptors, which are available through the province uh, for, for fairly cheap uh, for landlords, and uh, uh, that's, a, that's a good way of indicating whether there's a population in the room. Uh, that in combination with checking uh, those areas themselves, flipping up that box spring. Uh, the condition of a home, and so again in situations where it's really cluttered or really dirty and it's clear that the, uh, the unit isn't being maintained, uh, those, those units are going to be prioritized. A tenant's capabilities, as I said earlier, that can be physical capabilities, that can be mental capabilities. Uh, in, in, in some cases, um, as a lot of you know, uh, probably in just being here, uh, bed bugs are a pretty like emotionally destroying process. It's a huge amount of work. Uh, I'm I'm a person that uh, bed bugs release an anticoagulant, and that's what actually gets people itchy. Uh, itchy. It's the same sort of thing that a, a mosquito does. They just release quite a bit more of it. So you get generally, if you get itchy from mosquitoes, you get really itchy from bed bugs, and so. Uh, sometimes when I'm in preparing a suite or something like that, I get bit on the hands. Um, and the, that's the other thing that I recommend actually as well. If you have tenants that are being driven crazy by bed bugs, uh, taking an antihistamine, because it's an allergic reaction, uh, can keep you sane, uh, which is valuable for you as a landlord, uh, having, having sane tenants. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and, it, and I mean, uh, like, in, in some cases, they're not, like, tenants aren't sleeping at night. Uh, and so uh, a person can go a few nights without having a good night's sleep. But when that happens night after night after night, it can turn a lot of pretty sharp people pretty crazy after a period of time. Uh, and, and bugs like mice are one of those things where uh, even, like, fairly uh, well-adjusted people uh, can, can go off the deep end fairly quick with them. Uh, level of existing supports is uh, another part of it. And a lot of these are sort of uh, a little bit arbitrary uh, sort of rating systems, but you're supposed to assess whether, uh, like in, in a lot of cases, there isn't family members, there isn't friends around that person. And so they do want to prioritize those, those people that really, really need the service. And then uh, both for uh, your sake and for the individual involved, we're also trying to prevent eviction. Uh, because when you evict a tenant with bed bugs, uh, when, when a tenant's in there, the, the, the population is attracted to the tenant, and so it's in the suite. When a tenant leave the, leaves that suite, it can be really difficult to properly treat it because there's no reason for those bugs uh, to be in the suite any longer, and they start leaving the suite looking for another food source. And so those Climb up traps and other interceptors are really effective when there's when there's bait for them, uh, but when there isn't bait for them, it can be even more difficult for a landlord to try and try and get rid of the bugs. Uh, and so we want to work with, uh, and uh, it's it's a good thing to like try and put yourself in a, in a circumstance. It's very easy to see a situation where uh, a tenant seems to be uncompliant from your own eyes. But when you look at the list that you get from a place like Poulin's, you're talking about, like, imagine yourself uh, with three days' notice doing all of your laundry. 
Uh, imagine uh, trying to find a place for all the stuff in your suites that isn't in the drawers or shelves uh, that are in your suite. Uh, you don't have to be ridiculously cluttered to recognize that in, in, in some cases that's a, it's a really difficult thing to accomplish. And then imagine on top of your already busy lives with your kids and your family and your work, uh, getting up every day and, and vacuuming uh, a couple of times a day, preferably, to try and, to try and get rid of the bugs. It's a really, um, and, and, and in some cases, landlords are asking tenants to get rid of furniture, and in, in a lot of cases, that's, that's a good thing. Uh, but uh, there's no guarantee that if they get rid of that furniture, that the new furniture that they then bring into the suite doesn't get reinvested and that they're not doing it all over again. And so uh, it's, it's very easy to see all those things through our own perspectives. And it's a, it's a really invasive and really uh, sort of uh, difficult process for everyone that's involved in it. And it's important to, uh, to do what we can to make it easier for everyone involved. Um, our, our program is something that I'm really excited about because I, I, I do think, uh, like, as landlords, uh, you need to talk openly about bed bugs. Uh, tenants need to be able to approach you uh, about bed bugs so you can respond to it before it becomes really expensive. Uh, but there's, uh, there's steps involved in the process that are above and beyond what a landlord can do and in some cases what a tenant can do. Uh, and I think our process can be really important in ensuring that you don't have uh, a, a couple of at-risk individuals uh, providing huge harborages for bed bugs that then spread into the rest of the rest of the apartment. And so we want to make ourselves known because we really, really want to be a part of, of the solution. Um, I, I'm just going to make a, a, a few points, uh, and, uh, and and then I'm going to go on to like a few things that sort of span from what we're doing that we're moving into doing that I think also uh, can be beneficial for, uh, for landlords and tenants. Uh, I really encourage landlords to not get their tenants to spray with residuals themselves. Uh, it's one thing for them to catch the bugs and spray in a bag or to vacuum and spray in their vacuum bag before they throw it out. Uh, but if, if you're spraying your bed, for instance, uh, with residuals, and you're not spraying the whole suite, what you're doing is uh, deterring them from being where we know they're going to be and where they're treatable to, to moving them all over the rest of the suite. And so it makes it really, really difficult uh, to treat properly when tenants are, are self-treating. Um, spray once more. Uh, it, it takes uh, 14 days for them to hatch. Uh, some people don't notice or get itchy from them, and they're very difficult to find. You're not saving yourself any money by not treating one more time to make sure that they're gone. Uh, and, and, uh, and so it's, it, it is worth not, not being cheap in the, in the case of bed bugs, and it is worth uh, responding with, with everything that you can right away and doing stuff that you can do to, to prevent. Um, so one of, the, one of the things that, I, uh, that we do through the Bug and Scrub program that we've uh, sort of expanded into, uh, we, uh, we built a heat trailer to heat up the laundry to kill the bed bugs. Uh, and uh, one of the places where it's not necessarily good for, uh, it, it's good for landlords if you have tenants moving into your suite, uh, for their stuff to get treated at that point. They already have their stuff in a trailer, uh, and if you can heat up their belongings inside that trailer, uh, it, it isn't that cost relative to the cost of moving. Uh, and it can be a, a quite easy time because those belongings are contained within the unit. Uh, and so that's something that uh, uh, it doesn't, uh, if a tenant moves from a suite, the uh, the suite that they're moving from still needs to get treated, uh, but uh, it is an easy way of uh, treating an individual's belongings. So making that known to clients that are moving in 
Uh, and uh, like you can't know if your client has bed bugs, uh, but mentioning that that service is available through Poolins or through ourselves or through other organizations that are doing that, uh, it's it's a really smart and easier time for them to get rid of the bed bugs, and it saves you money down the road. Uh, sealing units. Uh, when there's empty units, uh, in my mind, there's no reason at all not to spend money, uh, spend a little bit of money to seal that unit so that if that unit ends up uh, getting bugs, there's less chance of bugs spreading to other suites. Uh, so that if neighboring suites have bugs, there's less chance of bugs ending up in that suite. There's just no reason at all. Uh, and uh, as, as uh, uh, Remember your name. Uh, as the guy from Poolins described, uh, sorry, Craig. Craig. I apologize. I'm a bad person. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it once they get in walls uh, and once they get established in walls, uh, it's it's a devastating process uh, and, and a really expensive process. And so spending a little bit of money to prevent that from happening is uh, is a no brainer in my mind. Uh, and that's something that. Uh, someone could train you to do, or that's something that we'd, uh, uh, that we'd do privately as well. Uh, the, uh, they also talked about those interceptor traps, and I'm, uh, I think if you think about it intuitively, uh, it's, it's so easy to catch fish when you bait them with a light that it's illegal. Uh, any, uh, any, uh, any hunting outfit uh, that wants to guarantee that you're going to catch a bear has been baiting that bear all year round. Uh, bed bugs eat uh, or feed off of blood uh, and they feed on the couches and beds and, uh, and primary sitting areas. Uh, and so uh, it, it doesn't replace the need to spray because uh, you want to knock back that population and you want to hit it with as many things as possible because because they're difficult to get rid of. But intuitively, it's really, it, it really makes sense uh, for an animal uh, or for an insect that, uh, that likes small, dark cracks and crevices, uh, but comes out uh, twice a week to feed, to, to catch it when it tries to climb up, uh, climb up onto those feeding areas. Uh, and, and, and that in combination with uh, steaming, uh, so uh, it's good to set traps under those feeding areas, but it's also good to uh, clear up those uh, feeding areas. So if you steam uh, or bugs and eggs on those cleaning areas and then use those traps to catch the other ones as they try and get up on it, it, it does a couple of things. Uh, it, it traps bugs, but it also makes it more difficult for them to get on and off of those primary feeding areas. and so it concentrates the population because the ones that survive are the ones that aren't trying to get on and off regularly. Uh, and so it makes it a more treatable problem. Uh, and, and that's something that uh, we have quite a bit of experience steaming through the other work that we do. Uh, and that's something that we also offer privately to individuals that don't qualify for the program. Uh, if you want us to come in and just steam the primary seating areas and put traps underneath them. That's something that, uh, that we can offer that we think has some, some real benefit. Uh, and again, is an hour and a half of time in a suite, and so uh, isn't ridiculously expensive and, and can be effective when combined with knocking back the population with, uh, with regular means of pest control. Uh, the, other, uh, the other point that Craig made uh, that I want to reiterate that what's really important is the monitoring. Uh, if you can get into your suites a few times a year, like, uh, preferably like quarterly or something like that, and uh, do a good inspect. Pull that uh, bed back from the wall, uh, flip up mattress and box spring, uh, or uh, set traps and come back uh, a week later and see if there's any insects in those traps. If you can catch, uh, because uh, 200 to 500 uh, children adds up really, really quickly. Uh, if you can catch them uh, within a uh, within a month or two, and because uh, because if you if you don't get itchy from them, 
uh, you're not necessarily going to uh, not necessarily going to know they're there uh, because they hide during the day. Uh, and when you flip the lights on, it's really really important that uh, landlords take that extra step in that regard. 